family entered the recovery room as Lincoln was being attended to by Dr. Lloyd and a male nurse by having the bandages on his head replaced. Once they went inside, Lincoln turned his head to face them with an expression of confusion and uncertainness. Uh-huh? Uh-huh? Lincoln said in a mentally disabled tone, pointing at his sisters with a shaky hand. Oh, your parents and sisters are here. Lloyd turned to Lincoln's family. Hi there. We were just checking, changing Lincoln's bandages. Is he doing all right? Rita asked anxiously. I've been analyzing Lincoln's activity since yesterday, and he appears to be recovering, a bite very slowly. However, he tends to get very fidgety with himself whenever he's nervous and has trouble controlling his arm movements from time to time. This is likely due to the damage done to his frontal brain lobe, Lloyd explained. Uh, I don't quite follow, R Rita answered in confusion. Well, you see, the frontal lobe of the brain affects a person's behavior, learning, personality, and involuntary movement. And due to the heavy damage Lincoln's frontal lobe took from a piece of fractured skull jamming into it, all four of those characteristics will be heavily impaired, Lloyd answered. Lincoln may sometimes act erratic or so very unusual behavior, such as random fits and maybe even panic. His rationality and sense of recognition will also be impaired too, meaning he won't be able to distinguish between reality and fantasy. Real rationality? Erratic behavior? Lynching her question, obviously confused. What he means to say is that our brother is unable to rationalize any situations around him properly, and he may not see certain things the way a normal person would. Toddlers often recognize and memorize certain people or objects by appearance, and that's the case with Lincoln here. He's seeing this things the way a toddler would see him, but m the memory loss seems to be the reason Lincoln doesn't recognize all of us. If he had all of his memories, he'd probably recognize us quite easily and react a different way. As you can all see, Lincoln seems confused just by looking at us, so it's obvious that he doesn't remember us. Her sister has been watching Lincoln look over at Rita, and a relieved look came over his face as he saw her. He still recognizes Mom, though, Luna said. Ma? Ma? Lincoln muttered joyfully, struggling to control the movement of his arms as he held them out towards her, but his expression changed as he glanced back at his legs with a panicked look on his face. Lincoln? Rita said worriedly as she saw his reaction change. Uh, uh, stuck! Uh, uh! Lincoln cried out in a panic as he squirmed around trying to move his legs and feet, but they wouldn't move. In the process, he started screaming in pain as he moved his back so much that the doctor and nurse had to restrain him. Lincoln's parents and sisters began fearing for his well-being as they watched him suddenly start to panic, starting to panic for reasons they didn't know. L Lincoln, you need to calm yourself down and stop moving around so much. You're going to hurt yourself. Dr. Lloyd urged Lincoln as he held his arms against the bed. No, 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 not, no, no. Lincoln yelled in a slurred in disabled tone, shaking his head from side to side and trying to break free. What's going on? What's wrong with him? Rita asked, now starting to panic. Lincoln doesn't understand that he's been paralyzed from the waist down, so he's panicking from not being able to move his legs. He did this yesterday after you all left, too. I doubt he even knows what par paralysis is, given the state his mindset's in. Lloyd answered, struggling to calm Lincoln down. Oh, oh, stop! Lincoln yelled, still shaking his head around. Doc... Doc, we may need to sedate him if he keeps this up. His wounds haven't fully healed, and he could really end up hurting himself from pressing around like this, the nurse advised. No, let me try and help him. Rita begged, rushing up to Lincoln. Let go of him, doctor. I'll try and calm him down. Dr. Lloyd and the nurse stepped back, allowing Rita to comfort Lincoln. As he took hold of Lincoln's hands and made eye contact with him, he calmed down a bit, but still trembled fearfully with a frightened expression on his face. Lincoln, I'm here, sweetie. Please calm down. Rena urged him, with tears forming in her eyes. Ma, st stuck, Lincoln whimpered, glancing down at his legs. I know, sweetie, Rita sniffed, softly hugging him. It's not your fault, Lincoln hit. It was an accident. Lincoln didn't appear to understand exactly what was going on, but he seemed aware of his mother's sadness and lifted his trembling hands to try and embrace her. Lincoln's sisters began to slowly approach his bed, including Luann, who walked up to Lincoln with tears in her eyes. L Lincoln? Do you remember me? Luann stammered, wiping tears from her face. L Lincoln turned his attention away from Rita uh, as he released him and made eye contact with Luann, and the moment he did this, something unexpected happened. Everyone watched as Lincoln's expression changed from confusion and dismay to a look of anger and hatred. 
Then he let out a low growl at Lin and raised his finger at her. You, ha ha, you, you, Lincoln yelled in an angry man manner and quickly lurched forward with his good hand and tried to grab Lin, but Lori rushed up and stopped him. Lincoln, stop! Lori begged him, staking his head with clenched teeth. Lincoln yelled, no, no, hurt me, Lin, hurt, ugh, ugh, ugh. Lin backed away from Ben in both sock and sorrow, remembering the way he looked at her the other day. There was no doubt about it now. Lincoln knew who Lan was and seemed to have some memory of what she had done to him. Although Lincoln couldn't speak normally and coherently, Lan was still able to understand what he was trying to say quite clearly. Lincoln, I'm sorry. I really am, Lan pleaded tearfully, rushing forward and suddenly embracing Lincoln. I know you're very angry with me for what I caused you, and you have every right to be... But please believe me when I say that I'm sorry for everything. I'm sorry I ended up putting you in this state, and I swear that I'll never prank you or anyone else ever again, and I truly mean it this time. I don't know if you understand me, but please forgive me for everything. Lincoln didn't seem to entirely understand her due to the state his mind was in, but he obviously remembered what Lynn had done to him, and this clearly made him angry. What Lincoln did next socked everyone in the room. He slowly raised a trembling hand up and slapped Luann on the side of her face. Everyone gasped as Luann backed away with socked expression, feeling the sting on her cheek as he saw Lincoln's expression. He glared at her with clenched fists and with tears in her eyes. And this sight nearly broke Luann's heart. L Lincoln, she whispered sorrowfully with tears running down her face. Hurt. You hurt. You be hurt. Lincoln drawled angrily, pointing at her with his good arm, which was trembling like crazy. I'm sorry, I know I hurt you, but it was an accident. Lynn pleaded, trying to calm him down. No, no, hurt, hurt. Lincoln yelled, shaking his head in anger. Lynn backed further away as Lynn Sr. rushed up to the bed and tried to calm Lincoln down, but he was of no help. Lincoln didn't seem to recognize him due to his memory loss, so he just ignored Lynn Sr. and continued pointing at Lynn with an angry... With an angry glare on his face and shouted out broke, both broken words and angry, incoherent gibberish at her. Seeing as how Lynn Senior was not helping, Rita tried calming him down. Lincoln, stop this, please. Lynn is really sorry for what she did to you. Can't you understand? Rita pleaded, gently grabbing his cheeks and facing Lincoln torture. Lincoln slowly calmed back down, but still trembled with anger. He attempted to glance back over at Lynn, who was now standing in the corner of the room, lamenting, but Rita held his head in place and kept his focus solely on her. Lloyd and the nurse stood nearby in case Rita lost control of Lincoln. Lincoln, please look at me. Don't look at Lynn. Just look at me, Rita urged him with tears forming in her eyes. Lincoln, she won't hurt you, I promise. Please try to understand me. Lincoln stared right into his mother's eyes, clearly trying to understand the situation but it was very hard to do due to the brain damage. His angry expression changed to that of a nervous, worried child as he saw his mother crying. While Lincoln wasn't able to understand the reason for Rita's sorrow, he knew that something was wrong when he saw how sad she looked. It didn't take, it didn't take even the mind of a toddler to understand that. Ma? Ma hurt? Lincoln asked in a worried tone. Rita shook her head and said, No, I'm fine. Just please listen to me. Lynn isn't going to hurt you ever again, and she says she's sorry for everything she did to you. Can you understand what I'm saying? Lincoln, uh, uh, understand? Lincoln asked in a disabled voice. Yes, Rita nodded, feeling a spark of hope. Do you understand what I'm saying? Lincoln said, stayed still for a few seconds, then he slowly nodded with a slurve. Uh-huh. Rita and the rest of the family all felt a slight rush of relief as they heard Lincoln acknowledge her, and so did Dr. Lloyd and the nurse. Seeing as how Lincoln was more in control, Lenny stepped forward with her hands behind her back, clearly hiding something. She then beckoned Luann towards her as she turned to face Lincoln. Lincoln, Luann has something for you, Lenny said as Luann stepped up towards her. Luann reached behind Lenny and took something from her hands. As Lincoln looked over at her, his face then contoured to another hate-filled look, which immediately caught the attention of Lloyd and the nurse. Rita, Lynn Sr., and the rest of Lincoln's sisters also became worried that he'd suddenly lose it again. When you... Lincoln growled as Luann approached the bed with her hands behind her back. Miss, you better back off, nurse warned her. Something about you has clearly set him off, and if he decides to get violent again, I don't want you getting hurt. I know why he hates me, and I think he still remembers why. And I don't blame him, Lynn admitted, stopping next to Link's bed. 
but I really want to show him how sorry I am, and that's why I want to give him a best. Lincoln looked at, about ready to punch Lan, but stopped halfway when Lan showed him what she had been hiding behind her back. It was his old stuffed rabbit, Bun Bun, all stitched up and repaired. Lincoln's angry expression immediately faded and was replaced by a look of both surprise, awe, and relief the moment his eyes fell upon Bun Bun. Bah? Baba? Lincoln stuttered as Lan held the stuffed rabbit out to him. Here you go, Lincoln. He's all fixed, Lan said, handing Bun Bun to Lincoln. Lincoln, what I did to Bun Bun by placing him in that explosive party ball in your room. I'm so sorry. It was meant to be a prank, but I didn't think he'd get so badly damaged. So Len Lenny sewed me how to sew, and I passed him up. L Lincoln held the small rabbit close to his bandit's chest in a loving manner, as if it were a lost lover who re reunited with him. Lincoln also appeared to tear up with happiness as he rubbed Bun Bun slowly against the side of his face. B -b -b bun Bun? Lincoln said, and it's risingly coherent. Yes, I knew you'd remember him, Lan replied in relief. Lincoln wasn't paying much attention to Lan at this point, as he held Bun Bun close to his bandit's chest lovingly like a mother comforting her baby. A rush of different memories began running through Lincoln's head, but still, with many gaps in between due to the brain damage he received. Lincoln held his eyes set as he remembered some of his past memories of Bun Bun, in his mind, he saw himself as a young five-year-old again, trembling fearfully in his bed during a power outage and calling for his mother. When she didn't show up, Bun Bun was very to comfort in him and ease his fear, allowing him to fall asleep peacefully. Bun Bun had always been there to keep him company whether never there was a huge storm or a power outage. Lincoln then remembered more memories of him and Bun Bun during his early childhood, while still having a few memory gaps here and there. He saw himself sitting next to a young Lori, Lan, Luna, and Lenny, with Bun Bun at his side at the family table during his fifth birthday, preparing to blow out the candles on his cake. Close behind them were his parents and young Luna and Luan, all with smiles and joy on their faces. Although Lincoln's mindset was still in a toddler-like toddler state because of the brain damage, he still remembered parts of his past, and Bun Bun was a big part of it. The small stuffed rabbit had always been there for him whenever he was scared, alone, or distressed, and so had his sisters. Even though Bun Bun wasn't actually alive, he'd always been a very close companion to Lincoln ever since he was a young child, always fair to comfort him whenever he was dealing with personal issues that even his sisters wouldn't understand. While Lincoln could no longer remember most of those issues, he still remembered Bun Bun all too well, yet there were still many gaps in Lincoln's memory that he just couldn't recall. He had only recovered a small portion of his memories overnight, and after seeing Bun Bun, Bun but despite that, Lincoln wouldn't recover all of them due to the severity of the damage done to his brain. However, someone else was also there for him. In Lincoln's mind, he saw someone that seemed so familiar, yet he just couldn't seem to remember who that person was. A boy with black skin and black hair. Lincoln also didn't recognize some of his family members, all except Lan and his mother. This boy, who is he? Who are these other girls? I don't know them. Or do I? Lincoln thought as his memories continued rushing through his head like a train. He saw various places, people, and many other things that he found familiar, but just couldn't remember. Yet right now, it didn't matter that much to Lincoln. He was so happy to be reunited with Bun Bun. Lincoln remembered seeing Bun Bun destroyed by Luan at one point, but most of the memories of the April Fool's Day events were still very fuzzy. All he remembered before waking up in the hospital was being crushed underneath something big and heavy, but he couldn't remember what it was. Lincoln knew Luan was behind this from a few memories of her performing pranks on him, but the rest of it was fragmented and scrambled. Why did Luan do this? What was I doing? Lincoln wondered in his mind. Then he suddenly saw someone else in his mind. It was a girl with black hair and tan skin, wearing a purple coat, blue shorts, and purple socks. Did he know her? Lincoln could have sworn he'd seen her before, known her before, yet it seemed he couldn't. All these people Lincoln saw in his mind seemed so familiar, except he had no idea who they were or where he had seen them, and it was beginning to be, uh, to discombobulate him. Who is this girl? Who are all these people? Why do I feel as if I know them when I haven't even ever met them? Lincoln pondered his fractured thoughts, trying hard to figure out who these mysterious people in his memories were. Lincoln opened his eyes and came out of his trance when the door to the recovery room opened and a brown-skinned boy entered. It was Clyde McBride, and he had a very concerned and worried expression on his face as he saw Lincoln laying in a hospital bed with bandages around his head and a, bro a broken forearm. 
Oh, Clyde, Rory explained as he saw the African-American boy enter the room. I didn't expect to see you here. Clyde didn't have a love-struck breakdown over Rory like he usually did when he made eye contact with her due to the situation. Instead, he looked at Rory with worry and concern. Yeah, Lenny called me earlier and informed me of Lincoln's condition, Clyde replied in a glum tone of voice. Is it true? Is Lincoln brain damaged? Better take a good look, because the proof's right here, Lana said sadly, nodding over at Lincoln, who had turned his attention from Bun Bun to Clyde. He had a brown-skinned boy with a confused look on his face. This boy seemed oddly familiar to Lincoln, but he didn't seem to recognize him. All of Lincoln's sisters also noticed this and grew very worried. Had Lincoln really forgotten his best friend since childhood? If that was the case, would he forget Clyde forever, or would he remember him over time as his temporal lobe healed? This boy... Do I know him? Lincoln thought as Clyde approached his bed. Lincoln? You still know me, right? Clyde asked nervously, fearing that Lincoln had forgotten him. The answer to that was confirmed when Lincoln said in a disabled tone, Who you? I not know you. Clyde's heart sank when he heard Lincoln say that, and his parents and sisters all looked heartbroken as well. They had expected this to happen because of Lincoln's condition, but what they all feared the most was whether or not he had forgotten Clyde forever. Was Clyde a part of some of the memories that Lincoln would never recover due to the severity of the brain damage? And what of Ronnie Ann and his other friends out there? Would Lincoln be doomed to forget them forever? No, Lincoln! Clyde teared up with despair. It's me, Clyde McBride, your best friend. Come on, I, I know you know me! The louds could see Clyde on the verge of tears and tried to ease his sorrow. Clyde, Rita said sadly, I know this is hard for you to accept, but Lincoln doesn't appear to recognize you. No, no, he can't. He wouldn't! Clyde protested, tears now visible in his eyes. It may not be forever, Clyde. Once Lincoln's brain starts to heal, he might remember who you are. Lori is certain, but still sounding doubtful. Ow! How long might that be? Clyde stammered. We don't know, Clyde. The doctor said it would be a while until his brain fully heals, Lori answered. Clyde looked at, over at to Dr. Lloyd and asked, Doc, does that mean he'll remember me over time? Lincoln might remember you, but it's too soon to tell. He only seems to remember his mother and his sister Luann, Dr. Lloyd explained, glancing over at Lincoln. His parents told me everything about how he received his injuries the other day, and judging from the way Lincoln acted just a few minutes ago, he seems to remember some of it. I don't really know how much of Lincoln's memory has been lost or how much of it he's retained. Only time will tell as he recovers. Just how bad is Lincoln's condition? Will he ever be the same as he will? Once he fully, as he was, once he fully recovers, I know he's paralyzed from the waist down, but will Lincoln ever be the same person like he was before? Clyde wondered, still upset over Lincoln's condition. No, I really wish I could say the word because, but I'm afraid Lincoln's never going to be the same person as he was before again. His mind will be in a permanent state of mental retardation for the rest of his life due to the heavy damage done to his brain, which means he'll have to be cared for for the rest of his life as well, Lloyd answered regretfully. Lincoln will also have to be re-educated with the very simple basics of living, such as speaking properly, tying his shoes, dressing himself, beaving, using the restroom, and so many other things as well. If he recovers more of his memories, he might be able to remember these things without any problems. And if that does happen, Lincoln's mindset might progress just a little further than it is currently at now. How far exactly? Clyde asked, now intrigued. I can't be sure how far exactly will progress as of now, but if I had to guess, I'd say maybe around three or four ages ahead of a toddler's mindset. Lloyd speculated. Wait, I thought you said yesterday that Lincoln would be like a toddler forever. Lloyd reminded. Yes, I did. Lloyd answered. And that was actually my era, which I apologize. At the time, Lincoln just had come out of surgery, so it was difficult to make an exact diagnosis. Up until now, I've never dealt with a child who received injuries in the scale. Because of that, I had to make a diagnosis based upon the severity of Lincoln's brain damage and injuries shown in the CT scans and x-rays. So I wasn't fully sure how to diagnose the state of his mindset at the time. But after I observed and examined Lincoln a little further after you all left last night, I think it might be possible for his mindset to move up a few years ahead once he recovers enough from his injuries. Clyde and Lincoln's family all looked a bit relieved to hear of this, but they were still upset that Lincoln's mindset would never progress any further than just a few years. And in addition to that, he'd still be paralyzed from the waist down, so Lincoln would still be bound to a wheelchair for life. 
Will Lincoln ever walk again? Clyde asked doubtfully. No, I'm afraid that's not possible. Lloyd replied regretfully. The spinal cord got severely broken near his waistline, and it was far too damaged to repair surgically. Several of the discs in the broken area of Lincoln's spine were shattered into pieces, so much so that it wasn't even possible for them to be fixed or healed, not without causing further damage to his spine. So I'll take it he'll be in a wheelchair forever? Clyde said sadly. Yes, I'm afraid so. Lloyd nodded with much regret. Clyde glanced back over at Lincoln, who was now fiddling with Bun Bun in a childish manner, and appeared to be fidgeting with himself as well. His sisters also heard him make him strange grunting sounds as he fidgeted around with both Bun Bun and his own fingers. Link, you all right? When Senior Junior asked him, reaching out to touch him, but Lincoln suddenly glanced up at her and jolted backwards with a streak. Ah! Lincoln squealed and continued to fidget around with himself. Hey, what's this problem? One wonder worriedly had. Link in some change in behavior. Why do you do that? Or uh, pulling it out as to Lincoln's fidgety behavior. He seemed he seems to be freaked out by me by just being touched. Does Lincoln think I'm trying to hurt him? Lynn Jr. wondered. You must have startled him, Rita interjected. Lincoln's memory is still fuzzy, so he probably doesn't remember you yet. As far as he's concerned, all of us are strangers to him, or at least I assume Lincoln sees some of us that way. Doc, is there any way for us to really know what Lincoln remembers, Lynn Senior asked, sounding almost desperate. No, there really isn't. At least not yet, Lloyd replied. The only way we'll truly know what, what what he fully remembers depends on how recovery goes. Once Lincoln recovers enough of his from his injuries, he should be able to remember more of his memories, and he might be able to talk more clearly. But he's He'll still occasionally have speech problems due to the damage done to his brain. Even once his brain recovers from the severe bruising and the frontal stab wound caused by that piece of his fractured, <coughs> sorry, fractured skull, <coughs> sorry again, Lincoln will still be mentally and physically impaired for the rest of his life. How exactly will Lincoln be able to speak? Will he still talk in that garbled way like he's been doing since he woke up from surgery? Marita asked in concern. I honestly can't be sure, given the circumstances right now, but Lincoln is clearly able to form a few complete words as we just witnessed. However, he's still not able to form full, coherent sentences, Lloyd answered. I'm quite frankly amazed that Lincoln is even alive after suffering such severe internal injuries. Like I said earlier, I've never treated children who suffered severe injuries on the skill, let alone seen them survive this long. Now, I've never been much of a religious man, or even believed in God that much. Now, after seeing Lincoln pull through all this, I've seriously begun questioning my beliefs. So have I, Rita replied, glancing over at Lincoln, who was now fiddling with Bun-Bun and mumbling incoherent gibberish. I, I still can't understand how a child as young as Lincoln could ever survive after an accident like he did. It's a miracle that he's still alive. I buy mentally impaired. My thoughts exactly, Lloyd agreed. But like I said the other day, even though Lincoln will live, it won't really be living. His mindset might progress only up to about three years ahead from the toddlers once he fully recovers, but no further than that. And he'll never walk again either. Lincoln's age will progress normally like any other person, but he'll have the mindset of a child forever. The blouse all looked at Lincoln with sadness in their eyes, including Clyde. They pitied him for all that had happened to him, and it was all because of Lynn. Clyde already knew that Lynn was to blame for this since Lenny told him about, about it over the phone the other night, but he had no idea how badly hurt Lincoln actually was until now. Clyde looked over at Lynn with a face filled with hate and disgust for what he had done to his best friend. He had always known Lynn to be careless when it came to pranking people, but he never thought that something this serious would happen as a result of her carelessness. Sir Clyde had always expected one of Lynn's pranking sprees to go awry at some point, given how reckless he was when performing them, but he never thought that something this serious would occur. He never thought that his best friend would end up severely brain damaged and paralyzed from the waist down for the rest of his life. Clyde knew for a fact that Lincoln's other friends weren't going to take this well at all once they found out, and he knew that once Ronnie Ann learned that Luann was the cause of Lincoln's condition, all heck would break loose. Clyde didn't know if Ronnie Ann knew about Lincoln's condition yet, but he knew that once she did, she'd be on Luann like an angry honey badger. 
Clyde wouldn't be surprised if Ronnie Ann beat her to a pulp as well. Luann, how could you do this to him? Why would you drop a fridge on Lincoln? What in the world were you thinking? Clyde angrily demanded to Luann. Luann said nothing, but instead just stared at him with a saddened look on her face. Luann didn't intentionally drop the refrigerator on him, Clyde. One of our refrigerator's balancing feet were loose, which caused it to fall on Lincoln when he hit it after slipping in bacon grease. Luann didn't notice it, so we can't blame her entirely, Luann interjected. Maybe if she checked it before setting up her little prank traps, Lincoln wouldn't be in the state now, would he? Clyde sought back. Clyde, please. When he spoke up earnestly, I know you're angry at Luann, and you have every right to be, but Luna's right. Luann never intended to hurt Lincoln, or anyone else for that matter. Is that so? Well then, let me ask her this. Clyde turned to Luann with a repugnant stare. Why did you pull another one of your pranks yesterday? You promised that you wouldn't do that again, and I should know, because Lincoln told me about it the day, on the day before April Fool's Day. He said that you agreed never to prank anyone on April Fool's Day ever again after the stunt actor incident last year. So why did you break that promise? Luann bit her lip, already expecting Clyde to ask that question. She had all heard similar questions and rants from her family about all her broken promises about ending her pranking spree since Lincoln's accident. So she had a strong feeling that he'd do the same thing as well. And she had no doubt that the rest of Lincoln's friends would be asking her the same thing. Lynn also thought about what Ronnie Ann would say about this as well. And that thought made her cringe a bit. Lynn was pretty sure that Ronnie Ann probably knew about Lincoln's condition since Lori had already told Bobby about it on the phone several hours ago and during the other night, and he had most likely informed Ronnie Ann as well. If anyone wasn't going to take this well, it would be Ronnie Ann, and Lynn had a feeling that she'd go completely ballistic once she saw that the state Lincoln was in. Clyde, Lynn began trying to find the right words to say, I, I wasn't using my head at the time, and I honestly didn't think that anything would go wrong, so I went ahead with pranking my whole family again. However, I never intended for Lincoln to get hurt, and that's the God's truth. Before anyone could say anything, the door to the recovery room opened and the Loud family turned to see who was entering the room. It was Bobby and Ronnie Ann. Dr. Lloyd and the nurse also turned their attention to them, as they weren't expecting to see any other visitors in the recovery room. Luann, however, cowered behind her sisters, worried that Ronnie Ann would get physically hostile with her over Lincoln. Excuse me, who are you two? The nurse asked the two of them. Are you, acquaint are you acquaintances of the Loud family by any chance? Lloyd asked. Yes, I'm Lori's boyfriend, Bobby, Bobby answered. Ronnie Ann is my sister and Lincoln's girlfriend. Lori told us about what happened to Lincoln the other day, so we both came down to see him right away to see how he's doing. I see, Dr. Lloyd replied, glancing briefly at Lincoln. Well, he's stable now, but he will need a lot of time to recover from his surgery. Now, I don't know if Lincoln's parents or sisters told you this yet, but I regret to inform you that he suffered serious brain damage and he's been permanently paralyzed from the waist down due to a severe spinal fracture near his waistline. Yeah, we know about it. Lori filled me in all, all those details. Bob nodded with a sad look on his face. Doc, is it really true what I've been told? Is Lincoln really going to have a mindset of a toddler for the rest of his life? Ronnie Ann asked fearfully. I originally thought that would be the case, but no, I don't believe so. Dr. Lloyd answered. I've never treated a patient with injuries as severe as Lincoln's, let alone see them last this long. Because of that, I wasn't sure if it would be possible for Lincoln to recognize his surroundings let alone speak, but he's already pulled through much better than I could have seen of his predicted. Does that mean that Lincoln will be all right? Ronnie Ann asked, her hopes slightly perking up. Well, the good news is that Lincoln's mindset will recover about three or four years ahead of a toddler's mindset once his brain heals. The bad news is that his mindset won't progress any further than that, and he'll be in a wheelchair for the rest of his life as well. I tried my best to repair the damage done to his spine, but it was just too serious. Also, Lincoln will still have gaps in his memory, even as his brain recovers, so he may not recall or remember certain events that happened in the past. He may also not remember who some of you are either, Lloyd explained. Ronnie and felt that spark of hope fade away when Lloyd said that. The thought of Lincoln forgetting her forever was heartbreaking, and Bobby seemed to share that feeling as well. Lincoln was like a brother to him, and having Lincoln forget him would be like losing him altogether. Ronnie Ann rushed up to Lincoln's bed in a hurry to see how he was doing. Lincoln was currently fiddling with a stuffed rabbit bun bun and couldn't 
could be heard make soft, low grunting sounds as he did so. Ronnie Ann could have swore that Lincoln was talking, but it was impossible to tell since he was practically mumbling. Lincoln also had an almost passive expression on his face with a small hint of glee as well as he toyed with his favorite stuffed rabbit, not paying attention to what was going on around him. Ronnie Ann slowly approached Lincoln, fearing that he wouldn't recognize her, and tapped on the bed row to get his attention. Lincoln? Ronnie Ann said, her face filled with worry and concern. Lincoln stopped what he was doing, turned to face Ronnie Ann, who had a look of fear and anticipation, and simply stared at her with an empty expression on his face. Lincoln then moved his head up and down slowly, as if scanning Ronnie Ann's appearance, then his eyes seemed to widen a bit as he did. You not, Lincoln said slowly in a slurred tone. Ronnie Ann's eyes widened when she heard him speak, but she had no idea what he was trying to say. Everyone else also seemed a bit confused as to what Lincoln was saying. What is it? What are you trying to tell me? She asked Lincoln, her heart pounding. Not her, me? Lincoln slurred, this time sounding more nervous. Ronnie Ann didn't know what to make of this, but she could tell that Lincoln was somewhat afraid of her. Ronnie Ann wondered why at first, but after remembering what Dr. Lloyd had said about Lincoln's memory problem, a terrible thought came to her. Had Lincoln forgotten very relationship? If so, did that mean he had forgotten Ronnie Ann as well? No, that couldn't be. Uh, I don't understand. Ronnie Ann reached out towards Lincoln. Lincoln, what are you saying? The moment he touched Lincoln's bandaged forearm, he suddenly jolted backwards and let out a panic cry. His expression was now a look of both fear and dread. No, you not, not, not. Lincoln yelled, trying to hide under the bed covers, but it was hard for him to use because of a busted forearm and paralysis. Sis? You better back away. You seem to be scaring him, Bobby advised cautiously. W what's going on? Why is he suddenly so frightened? Ronnie Ann stuttered in confusion. Uh, I don't know, Bobby answered. It might have something to do with his condition, or possibly his memory. Is it possible that he doesn't recognize me? Ronnie Ann asked. That might be the case, Bobby guessed. Or maybe he does recognize you in some way, but doesn't at the same time. What? That doesn't make any sense, Ronnie Ann said, rather confused. How can he recognize me and not recognize me at the same time? That's ridiculous. I think what Bobby is trying to say is that Lincoln only remembers certain parts about you, Ronnie Ann, Lisa answered. What do you mean by that? Ronnie Ann asked her. From what I just analyzed from Lincoln's behavior and reactions, he apparently has only a few memories of you, and I can probably imagine that those memories he has of you are from the times you bullied him. That's most likely the reason Lincoln suddenly freaked out the way he did when he came close to him, Lisa explained. Ronnie Ann felt her heart skip a beat when she took in what Lisa had just said. She didn't want to believe it was true, but the facts were right in front of her. Lincoln was afraid of Ronnie Ann, and his reactions confirmed it. Ronnie Ann was heartbroken by this horrible revelation, and Lynn just looked as upset. Looked just as upset. This is too awful. Just too awful. Lynn thought, feeling the urge to sob her eyes out again. Lincoln's mind is all messed up, and it's because of me and my stupid pranks. Lincoln had managed to only pull up the covers halfway with his one arm, yet his head was still visible, and that frightened expression was still on his face. Ronnie Ann could only step backwards as Lincoln trembled in front right, feeling a deep sense of loss and sadness. Lincoln had clearly lost his memories of him and Ronnie Ann as boyfriend and girlfriend, retaining only the horrid memories of Ronnie Ann bullying and tormenting him. Lincoln also didn't appear to recognize Bobby either, because of... When he approached the hospital bed and tried to comfort Lincoln, he just stared at him as if he were a complete stranger to him. At this point, everyone began fearing the worst for Lincoln regarding his memory, including Dr. Lloyd. Would he be doomed to forget all those he once knew and cared about? Would it be possible to regain any memory of them at all? No one knew, yet that all they could do was hope. Lisa, however, was more bound and determined than ever to find a way to fix her brother's crippled memory but she still needed to know more about the extent of Lincoln's cranial injuries to do that. She began forming a plan in her mind.